So I thought I'd do a little introduction video to atomic variables and specifically atomic variables in C++ and C++'s standard library um, with a little example as to what they are and why you might need them and why you should be aware they exist. So um, to kick off, uh, what we'll do is we'll have, we'll try and do a little worked example, which is let's say we've got a um, array of numbers and we want to add all the numbers up, which is something you might want to do in a database or something like that. Um, but essentially, it's a very simple problem. But let's let's just let's just say that that's our task for now. Is that we we've, we've got to sum up a bunch of numbers. So I'm going to make a um, a vector there, and I'm going to initialize it with a bunch of uh, random variables or random numbers, I should say. Um, I'm going to initialize it with thirty thousand. Um, 30,000 random numbers. So let's just, I'm just going to stick rand in there. Let's just see that, that compiles. Right, so we've got ourselves 30,000 random numbers. So the idea here is that let's imagine we've got an array of numbers and it's, it's so big that um, we need to be able to do it on multiple threads. So 30,000 numbers, you can sum up pretty quickly on one thread. But let's imagine that we want to split our work up onto multiple threads. So we want to sum these numbers, but uh, we want to use all the resources in the computer to be able to do it. Um, to start with, though, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just sum it all on one thread. Just to show that, you know, just to show that the single threaded version of this program will work. So I will pretty much do the same thing I did before here, except it's going to be uh, size. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to sum up this, this whole lot here. Um, and I'm going to sum, because it's a bunch of ints, I'm going to sum them into a, a slightly bigger number. So I'm going to sum that plus equals. So that should just, in the sum variable there, should just give me the sum of everything in the array. And I can just print that out at the bottom here. Um, let's just do this. Oops, can't type today. So this is just a single threaded version of the problem that we're trying to address here, which is we want to sum up 30,000 numbers. And um, let's have a look that works. So there you go. So there's my sum. Uh, how many digits is that? It's 494,667,024. And I think, yeah, it's it's the same every time because the random number is seeded the same every time. So every time I run that, I get the same result every single time. And we're going to assume that that's the correct answer at the moment. So that's all pretty cool. Um, but let's imagine that we want to sum that on uh, on many threads. So we want to split that work up into many threads because we the computer's got, you know, a, a ton of, uh, the CPU's got a ton of threads that it can do stuff on. So if I split that up into, on this computer, I could split it up into 16 different threads and they could all be running concurrently. So I'm going to use the, I'm going to use the uh, C++11's thread library and I'm going to create a bunch of threads. I'm going to keep the code that we've got here, and I'm going to go down to the, the uh, multi-threaded version down here. So I'm going to create really basic. I'm just going to create um, uh, just going to create three threads. So let's call them T1, T2, T3, and then I'm just going to wait for them to stop by calling join. So this is pretty lo-fi, but this is what I'm going to do. Um, and each one of these threads needs a method that it can run. So up here, let's just make a method, say, uh, that's going to sum. It's just going to sum numbers. Or there you go. It's, it's as basic as that. And what it's going to do is it's going to we're going to take in. We're going to pass in the vector to be summed, and we're going to say the range that we want to want it to sum. So, uh, 
let's just say index star and index end. Hopefully this will become clear in a bit. And I'm going to create a, so it's, this is a multi-threaded sum. I'm going to create a global there and I'm going to, I'm actually going to sum into that global. So let's go. Uh, we're going to start at the start index. Uh, I'll say less less than or equal to index end, and then plus plus that. So, so I'm just going to sum the to be summed. So I'm just going to sum a portion of that array. So that 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 method can now sum a portion of that array and it can stick it into this global variable. So once all these threads, if I, if I run this on three threads, once the three threads are finished, should get the same answer in this global variable that I got when I did the single threaded version. So I can just pass these into these threads down here. Uh, and I'll say, for this one, I'll sum from zero. I'll, this is inclusive, so I'm, I'm summing the numbers from, uh, in this array from zero to 9,999. On the second one, uh, 10,000 to 19,999. And on the third one, it's 20,000 to 29,999. So the three threads get started there. They, they start running this sum numbers thing, which ends up with a multi-threaded sum result in there. Uh, we wait for them all to end here. And then, then we can print the result again underneath. And this time the result's gonna be end up in this global variable. So hopefully if that compiles, uh, whoops. Oh, stop, 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 stop. What was your problem with that? Uh, oh, I'm missing a parameter on here. So, so the first parameter is the function to be called, and the rest is the parameters I'm passing. I'm not passing that to be summed in. So that's the array that we're we're trying to sum, and that's the indexes that we want to sum. So let's try that. There we go. So, hopefully, if everything works correctly, uh, we get the same answer in both. So there's our single threaded one, 494667024, and there's the multi-threaded one, and it's got a different number in, 490,302,874. If I run it again, 492 million, it's different again. Run it again, 450 million this time. Run it again. Oh, it's nearly right. Well, it's getting more right, but it's still wrong. And it's pretty much wrong every single time. So the reason for this is, is because this here, this, this add operation um, on this, it's kind of like, you can kind of trick yourself into thinking, hey, this is one operation because it's one line of code, but this is actually three operations here. So what you do is we are reading a value from memory into a probably a register on the CPU. We're changing that register and then we're taking the value of that register and we're writing it back into the memory location. So there's there's actually so there's a read, modify, write. There's three operations there. Now if two threads are doing that at the same time, then they can both read the same value. They can they can both add to that value in the register and then they both write back to the same place in memory. So one of those threads could be stomping over the other threads um, results. So you're going to, you're going to always going to lose some information there. And that's why this, the sum's always less than the value we actually calculated on one thread. We're always getting less information because some of the results are being um, blatted over as this is running concurrently with two other threads at the same time. So, um, uh, if you have a look on Compiler Explorer, if you've never been on Compiler Explorer, you should definitely check it out. Uh, this example, I've just put in literally, it's initialize the value to zero, um, add one to that value, and then just return it. 
And if we look at the machine code here, you can see those three instructions going on here. We are moving a value out of memory into the EAX register. We're adding one to the EAX register, and then we're writing the EAX register back into memory. So you can see that if two threads got to this line at the same time, they would both load the EAX register with the same value. They would both add one to that, to that value, and then they would both write that back. So even though two threads added one, you are, your number actually only went up by one instead of two. So that's the problem that's going on here. And this is where atomic values come in because atomic values allow you to perform an operation um, on a particular thread and you can be sure that the operation is, is correct, basically. So um, the way we do that in C++ is uh, we, they've got something called atomic. Um, and there are versions of this in, like, if you're doing Windows, you do um, interlocked increment, and I think it's called the same thing in C Sharp. Um, so using methods you can call, but um, C++ have decided to do it in this template way. So the way you do that, instead of having it just a basic variable like that, you make an atomic. And I've got to say it's a long. And... It has to be called multi-threaded sum, and it has to be initialized like that, I think. Um, so, um, hopefully, this ends up the same. Does this compile now? Um, what we've got to do down here is, we can't just read the value now, we have to call load, which is their way of explicitly saying, hey, give me the value of this atomic variable. So hopefully that's all we have to do. So that, so now I've changed out my multi-threaded sum for this atomic value. Um, this atomic value is guaranteed um, to be correct when it's executed on multiple threads. And one of the ways it's doing that is it's basically it's, it's doing the add operation, but um, it's checking that the value that you added to is the same by the time you've called it. And if it isn't, it might have to go around and do some work again. So this operation is, is definitely not as free as you might think, and it's definitely not as fast as you might think. So this code is now gonna be much, much slower. And CPU caches and, and everything like that have to be flushed to the other threads. So this code is now definitely a lot slower, but hopefully a lot more correct. And let's just see if that's true. And now there you go. So now this the second value equals the first one. And hopefully, we get the same result every single time. So the advantage of doing it this way is that, because um, you might be thinking if you've seen mutexes before, you can put a mutex around this value and that blocks other threads from accessing it whilst you're um, adding this value to it. And that will work and you could do that. So you could put, um, you, you know, you could, you could start a mutex here and then you could free it up afterwards here. Um, yeah, that'll work. Um, the reason why this might be a preferred way of doing something um, is not necessarily because it's faster, but because it doesn't require any thread to be blocked. Uh, so if any thread can get blocked, that means a thread can get deadlocked. So by having code that doesn't lock means that you can't deadlock code, which is deadlocks are a whole other thing if you want to look those up. Um, so it's definitely important to think about that. Um, and also, it's worth thinking about that um, you could rewrite this code to be way, way better than this. You could actually like sum up a temporary value and then you could just add it once at the end. And you could either do that by wrapping it around a mutex or you could do that with an atomic. So you could get away with without doing anywhere near as many atomic adds as this. So keep that in mind that uh, it's probably better to look at your algorithm um, before you try doing any fancy locking or atomic stuff or anything like that. But I hope that gives you a, a reasonable, like worked example of an introduction to atomics and why you want to use them in multi-threading. And uh, there is a CPPCon video from 2017, uh, which I'll link in at the bottom, which um, is his name, Fedor Pikus. I might have butchered his name there, but he has literally got an hour long talk that goes into Atomics right from the basic that I've showed you here all the way up to super advanced and uh, it's definitely worth a watch because it tells you everything you ever wanted to know and um, hopefully once you've watched that you'll basically be an expert in it anyway. So I hope that was of interest to some people at least 
uh, for the reasons why you might want to use these atomics or why you might not want to use them. Um, and I will catch you next time.